Welcome to the Association of Independent Maryland and DC Schools College Fair. We're so excited to have you join us this evening. My name is Danielle and I will be your facilitator throughout this six by six college fair, which means that all six of our institutions will get to speak about their college for six minutes. Before we get started, I wanna share a few housekeeping items with you. Your camera and microphone are muted, so our panelists cannot hear or see you. But I do want to encourage you to use that Q&A button on your screen to ask questions at any time and our presenters will be sure to answer them throughout tonight's presentation. This is going to be our last session for the night, but you can come back and refer to this recording at strivescan.com slash aims. All right, we're gonna get started with our first presenter, which is from St. Lawrence University. Thanks, Danielle. I'm gonna get a slide up here for you all. Okay, hopefully y'all can see that. So my name is Lindsay Malcolm. I'm a Senior Associate Director of Admissions here at St. Lawrence University. And as Danielle said, I'm gonna spend the next couple minutes kind of giving you the highlights, obviously, Six minutes isn't a ton of time, so I'm gonna do my best to kind of capture St. Lawrence for you all, touch on the highlights, and then end on some exciting news uh, that were open for visitors. So for those of you that do not know, St. Lawrence is located in Canton, New York, which is the very top of New York State. We are a small college town on a thousand acres of land, and we're located between the Adirondack State Park and the St. Lawrence River. So this big green line here on our map is the line of the Adirondack State Park. And we're this little star kind of tucked right outside of that line. You can see we're close to a couple airports, including Ottawa, Canada, which is just a little over an hour away. And then we're just about two hours south of Montreal, Canada. We are the oldest coeducational institution in New York State. The academics at St. Lawrence are diverse and highly flexible. We have 2,300 undergraduate students and a very small population of graduate students who focus on education and getting certificate to teach in New York State. We have 69 majors and 41 minors and several combination major options, pre-professional tracks like pre-health and pre-law. 80% uh, of our students choose to major and or minor in more than one discipline. And that really touches on that diverse and highly flexible curriculum. Our average classroom size is 16, and then our student faculty ratio is 11 to 1. So we're really a small institution. We like those sizes and we try to keep them really small. 98% of our classes have fewer than 40 students. As you get into your upper level courses past your, your first year program, your introductory courses, um, that's going to be even smaller. I'm an alum of St. Lawrence and I actually had 10 or less students in all of my classes by the time I was a senior. Right now, our five most popular majors are economics, business and the liberal arts, which is a double major in business. And then you get to choose any other of our other majors at St. Lawrence, psychology, biology and government. These change every year, but these are the five most popular programs based on the students that graduated last May. So what I wanna talk about next is one of our hallmark experience at, at St. Lawrence, and that's called the first year program or the FYP. And this is our living and learning community program. This is designed to ensure that students acclimate to life in and out of the classroom really quickly with support and then a fast sense of community around you. So there are three parts to this program, and this is gonna be right in your first semester when you come to St. Lawrence. There's an academics component, advising, and a residential experience. So you're gonna take class with a group of, of first year students, maybe 20 to 30 students, and you're also gonna live with those students. Your roommate's gonna be in that class with you, the students across the hall are gonna be in that class with you. You're all gonna have this shared interest and go to this class three times a week. The faculty who teach that class are also gonna be your academic advisors. So they're gonna to get to know you really intimately, not only as a student, but what are your goals for your four years at St. Lawrence? What do you wanna major in? And they're gonna work with you 
all the way until you declare your major at the end of your second year. So you're going to get this really personalized and kind of intimate advising experience, but also be learning a subject that you're interested in with peers that you live with. You get to pick this class too. They're quirky, they're fun. Um, we have Disney princesses and childhood development. We have major league baseball and statistics. We have a class this past fall where students learn to build a guide boat. So that is um, a class that's gonna take your high school academic experience and refine your reading, writing, research skills that are needed in our classroom. 65% of our students choose to spend a semester off campus. We have 30 programs in 20 countries all over the world and a variety of options that provide students with flexibility to choose an experience that aligns best with their academic goals. 98% of our students also live on campus. We are high, our residential experience is really closely aligned with student life, clubs, and organizations. We have an open door environment for students to get involved in one of our 140 clubs and organizations, and that doesn't include our athletics program. In athletics, we have 35 varsity teams. We are mostly division three, except for men and women's ice hockey. Those are division one programs. And then a third of our students at St. Lawrence are varsity level, and about 58% of our students participate in club and intramurals. Last fall, we actually added esports, which is our newest varsity sport on campus. Lastly, I wanna mention our Center for Career Excellence and our alumni network. Our Center for Career Excellence believes in an iterative process. So that means right from day one when you're on campus, you are going to start working with them to build a cover letter, build a resume, get connected with our alumni. And right now our alumni network is ranked fourth in the nation. And 95% of recent St. Lawrence graduates are employed or go to graduate school within their first year of graduates. <sighs> We're open for visitors, um, so please come and see us throughout April and into May. We'd love to have you for a tour, um, and we're also uh, offering interviews. So thank you so much. Enjoy the rest of the presentation. You did a great job, great pacing. <laughs> All right, our next college presenter is from Mary Mack College. Thank you, um, and let me just share my screen. Great. So hello, everyone, um, and thank you for joining us. Uh, my name is Ashley Willis. I'm a senior assistant director at Merrimack College. So these are kind of some of the main takeaways I'd love for everyone to remember about Merrimack at the end of this six minutes. Um, and that is really that Merrimack is focused on creating greater careers, stronger majors, really focus on the things that you are looking for and what the industry that you're looking to go into is looking for and pairing that up so that you can be getting the best preparation possible. Focusing on scholarships, really you know, making Merrimack an affordable education and a reasonable option for, for you and your families. Um, broader support, support is a really big piece of a Merrimack education, whether that's support um, because you're really academic, you really wanna academically challenge yourself or if you need more academic support along the way or support in internship experiences, really whatever it is the support that you need along your journey at Merrimack. And all of that really coming together to create a really transformative experience. We want you to, to leave Merrimack in a, in a greater place than you entered it. So well, some kind of more specific information about us. Merrimack is located in North Andover, Massachusetts, which is about 30 minutes north of Boston. Um, so we're pretty easy to get to. You can fly into Logan. We're just 30 minutes north of the city. And we're really centrally located to a lot of great New England opportunities. This is an overview shot of our campus. So like I said, we do have really easy access to the city, um, but we're not a city campus. We are an enclosed kind of in a suburban area. So you get that small enclosed New England campus community, but you still have a lot of the resources of the city very close by, um, which gives students sort of the mix of both. Some additional information about us, we are a Catholic Augustinian institution, doesn't mean you need to be Catholic to attend. Um, what's really important to us is how our community is based in the Augustinian values, which are focus in community service and lifelong learning. Um, so we're really focused on offer having our students be involved in service opportunities on campus, many of which are related to academic programs and so linking that service work to your educational experience, um, as well as building community on campus and helping Helping you find your place and sort of your home within our larger campus community. 
We have about 4,000 undergraduate students and an additional 1,400 grad students, so just over 5,000 total. That makes us a small to medium-sized institution. We definitely have a small school experience when it comes to academics. Our average class size is 22. Our student-faculty ratio is 16 to 1. Um, we do have a, a big proportion of full-time faculty, so you certainly have a lot of opportunity to really get to know your faculty um, as well as the other students in your program. But we have a lot of the resources of a larger institution. We have Division I athletics, undergraduate research opportunities, um, plenty of internship and career opportunities on campus. Um, so a lot of those research, more than 60 clubs and organizations. So a lot of opportunity to get involved, um, but without having to sacrifice that small school experience in the classroom. Um, we are a primarily residential campus, about 73% of our students do live on campus, um, and we do guarantee housing for all four years. And while the majority of our students are from Massachusetts and New England, we do have student representation from 38 states and 47 countries. Merrimack has undergone quite a bit of growth in the last few years, um, and so the range of places that our students are from has certainly increased as well. We have over 100 different academic programs across five schools, everything from business, health sciences, liberal arts, science and engineering, and education and social policy. Um, so a lot of different options in terms of what to study. And our students are relatively evenly spread across those five schools. So it's not any one major or program that's really dominating the campus. We also have a very flexible curriculum, so many students are double majoring or majoring and minoring and not necessarily in the same school. So your minor doesn't need to be in the same school that your primary major is in. I know I just mentioned the growth that Merrimack has had in recent years, um, and that's not just coming from us. Um, I, we'd like to point to the rankings just for the purposes of, you know, that the growth and innovation that we've had on campus um, is not just us telling you that, but that is being recognized at a larger scale. So it's certainly an exciting time to be part of the Merrimack community as we are continuing to grow and add new opportunities to campus all the time. Thinking about the application process, I know many people here tonight are probably juniors or even sophomores, so you still have plenty of time to prepare for this. Um, but just thinking ahead to the fall, Merrimack is on the Common App, so you can certainly apply there, or we have our own online application. All you need to apply is the actual application form, your high school transcript, your secondary school report, which is like a brief summary of your high school, your counselor will submit that on your behalf, and one letter of recommendation, either from their school counselor or from a teacher. We don't have an application fee and we don't require SAT or ACT scores. We're actually test blind, which means that we're just telling you up front, we don't use those test scores in the application process. So you don't need to spend time questioning, you know, is this a good score? Should I be sending it? We're just telling you that we're not using that in the process. Um, we do have a number of deadlines to choose from. We do have an early decision option, which is binding, um, and that's a November 15th deadline. If you're not prepared to make that final decision by November 15th, that is totally okay. We also have early action one, early action two, and rolling. And just a quick summary of our tuition fees. Main thing I wanna take away here um, is that we do have many scholarship opportunities. Um, and so that sort of sticker price is not necessarily what you should expect to be paying. And with that, I know I'm out of time, so I will wrap it up there. This is our contact information for any questions after today. Thank you. Wonderful, thank you. All right, our next presenter is from Clark University. Good evening, everyone. My name is Terry Malone, and uh, as Danielle said, I am from Clark University, which is located in Worcester, Massachusetts. That is about 40 miles west of Boston. Um, I start with this slide because it's our motto, challenge convention, change our world. And it might seem like a silly thing to start with, but it's something that really means something. On Clark's campus, it gets talked about, and it's kind of a, a call to action for our students and our university. Uh, and that is to think critically about the world, to dream big, and to try to be a positive influence on the world and, and with your actions and your deeds. In terms of our academics, which is obviously what you're looking for. There we go. Um, Clark is organized into three main colleges. Uh, we're a university that has about 2,200 undergraduate students, uh, but we organize ourselves into three colleges. The College of the Arts and Sciences is our largest college and hosts most of our majors in the sciences, social sciences, humanities, visual performance, arts, 
Uh, there's about 30 different majors and minors available through that program. Then we have a fully accredited school of management. Uh, only about 5% of business management schools receive full accreditation. We're really proud to be one of those. Uh, we have a business management major, an innovation entrepreneurship uh, major, a marketing major, and several minors related to the business world. And the newest addition to Clark is the Becker School of Design and Technology. And this houses our interactive media game design program, which was actually just recently rated number three in the country. So we're really proud of that program. It's only been on campus for a year. We adopted it from Becker College, which was a local college that unfortunately closed um, during the pandemic. And they had this phenomenal program that we did not want to see leave Clark, or leave Worcester. So Clark adopted it. All of their faculty um, facilities came to us building a new building on campus that will open next year. Uh, but we're really excited by that addition to our campus. So if you're interested in interactive media game design, it's a really exciting time to be considering Clark. In terms of our structure, we are a liberal arts school and a research university. We're actually the smallest liberal arts-based research university located in an urban setting. And we think that this allows us to do some interesting things um, by providing all of our students a liberal arts education and making sure they get the breadth of curriculum that comes with that so that our science majors can write well, they can speak well, they can look at problems from multiple problems. But our English majors can also look at, look at data and be comfortable making data-driven decisions. And we want students to have that broad exposure. But we also wanted them to develop real depth in an area and have lots of hands-on learning experiences. And our um, mission as a research university and our location in a city really allows us to create opportunities. The core of our curriculum are these four components. I'm not going to go into huge detail for the interest of time, but the first intention is actually very similar to what Lindsay was talking about without the residential component to it. But this is a small class, usually about 15 students, just first year students, really interesting topics. The professor is going to be your advisor until you declare a major. And then you have another component attached to it called the first year experience, which is really more of a, a social experience as a class that meets once a week separate from the first year intensive. Program of Liberal Studies is that core liberal arts curriculum, making sure that you're taking classes across the entire curriculum, being exposed to lots of different ways of thinking about the world, problem solving, and being able to relate to students with different perspectives. Problems of pro practice courses are courses mostly taught off campus. Um, they are out in the world doing the work of an art historian, as an environmentalist, as a teacher. So our professors work with Worcester community members to design these classes. Um, art history professors routinely are doing them at the Worcester Art Museum, and the final project is to curate an exhibit at the Worcester Art Museum. Clark has an arboretum, so environmental uh, science classes are usually out there working uh, on environmental issues or working in the city. Uh, teaching classes are all in the Worcester cl public classrooms, so lots of hands-on experiences built right into the curriculum and the courses that you're taking. And then the capstone requirement is an independent project that you will work on your senior year with a faculty advisor. It could be a major research project, a high level internship, a creative project, but it's something that's, gonna, that's going to pull all of your experiences together, both within your program of liberal studies requirements, as well as the depth of your major um, to do a project that really means something to you and that you are passionate about. Clark, um, if you're gonna remember one thing today, I want you to remember our fifth year accelerated master's degree program. This is a program where if you come as an undergrad uh, and maintain a qualifying GPA, for most of these master's degrees, that means a 3.4 GPA. If you meet the qualifying GPA, your sophomore, junior and senior year, you can stay for a fifth year and earn a master's degree during that fifth year. And we charge no tuition for the fifth year. It's a free master's degree. And about a third of our students stay and take advantage of it. We love having these fifth year students that continue to work in our office. They continue to tell really great stories about the opportunities they're having. And they get both the bachelor's and master's degree for the same cost as their bachelor's degrees. Um, student life is a really active on campus. We're a small school. We have about 2,200 undergrad students, but we have 150 student clubs and organizations. Uh, things you would expect, Model UN, um, religious-based groups, um, arts and culture-based groups. Uh, academic-based groups, uh, a lot of, lot of community-based groups. I think that goes back to our mottos. But really fun clubs like the beekeepers of Clark or the, the um, urban gardeners and things like that. We have 50 different study abroad programs 
as well as two study away programs, which are programs within the United States, uh, but are full time away from Worcester doing internships, usually uh, the 17 varsity sports available as well. So you'll have a wealth of opportunities in the classroom and um, through the student clubs and activities. And the best way to see it is to come to campus. We're open and we'd love to see you. Thanks and have a great night. Wonderful, thank you so much. All right, our next presenter is St. Olaf College. All right, everyone, good, after, good evening. My name is Reginald Miles, and I serve as one of the Associate Deans of Admission at St. Olaf College and the Director of Multicultural Recruitment. So it's such a pleasure to have you all this evening. I'm gonna give you a snapshot of St. Olaf. <clears throat> so we are actually, I'm, I'm originally from Massachusetts, so now I'm in the Midwest, and um, we are in Northfield, Minnesota. So we're about 45 minutes from the Minneapolis, St. Paul, Twin Cities. So Minnesota is a very outdoorsy place with four seasons. We're known for the Minnesota State Fair. We're, we're known for the Minnesota Twins, the wilderness, the hiking. It's one of the best places to live. 45 minutes south of Minneapolis, St. Paul is Northfield. And that's where St. Olaf College is located. Northfield is a very quaint college town with 20,000 residents. And 5,000 of those residents are college students. In Northfield, we have a very beautiful downtown area with a lot of restaurants, a lot of shops, a lot of cafes. We're also known for, on the first Thursday in December, we actually close down the restaurant, close down the streets. The restaurants are open. There are sleigh rides and it looks like the North Pole right in town. Also about six years ago, Hallmark actually filmed a Christmas movie in Northfield. Definitely Google that for sure. It's Love Always Santa. 2016. And one of my favorite things is um, if you heard of Fruity Pebbles post cereal, the headquarters are located right near campus. And on a good day, you can actually smell the Fruity Pebbles being made as I did yesterday. So as we talk about our campus community, again, 3000 students, 60% of our students are from out of state. 10% of our students are international from over 95 countries. Our campus community is a very vibrant, active community. 23% of our students identify as having a diverse background. And, you know, diversity, equity, and inclusion is very important to our campus community. And we are looking for like-minded individuals who encompass the same values as well. All right. So one thing about our campus, we are a liberal arts interdisciplinary institution, which means you get to customize your own experience by working closely with faculty members across many disciplines. Some of our majors include social work, nursing, fine and performing arts, theater, music, <clears throat> excuse me, dance, English, Norwegian, Spanish, French, biology, chemistry, the list goes on and on. Students actually can double major. They actually can triple major. I don't know how students do it, but they seem to get it done. And then our students can actually have a major and a concentration. So as you start your college search, you'll learn that schools have minors. We don't offer minors at St. Olaf, but it's very similar and we call them concentrations where students, allow, students are able to take classes outside their academic discipline. With our campus community, students can literally roll up their sleeves and get involved in research. So for my biology students who have a passion for social soil conservation, I should say, they can get started working with faculty as early as their freshman year. And if that work is actually published, they're actually able to put that onto their resume, which would make them a more marketable individual. We have my English students who are really passionate about video gaming. And so they are working with faculty members on research within that particular facet of the field. Now, as we talk about our student to faculty ratio, 12, 12 to one, average class size is right around 23. As you get more into your major, that class size will become a lot smaller. And all of our faculty members, all of our students have faculty advisors and they conduct office hours each week. So this is a place where students will not fall from the front. They will not fall 
through the cracks. If you're not in class after the second day, the professor will reach out to you to say, what's going on? Is everything okay? That's the kind of community that we have here at St. Olaf College. And then when it comes to study abroad, um, we're, we've been ranked number, number one in the last 10 years when it comes to our study abroad programs. We have programs across the globe, literally. We have opportunities for students to study in five different countries during the course of a semester. So it's really a great opportunity to leave Minnesota for a little bit, to immerse yourself into a different culture. Now talking about that, we offer language houses on our, camp on our campus. So if you want to speak Spanish, French, German 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and really immerse yourself in that culture and you know, really be an expert of that language, you can do so as well on campus. We have a very inviting community. We have over 200 clubs and organizations from the Caribbean Club, the Writers Guild, the Harry Potter Club, Vegetarian and Vegan Club, LGBTQ plus IA, community service, student government, and so much more. And not to mention our friends at Carleton College, which is <clears throat> in, our in the same town in Northfield with us right down the street. We have, there are 2,000 students there that we are in engaged with them, We're very involved when it comes to our sports, so we're a division three school. And we also have an indoor track facility. We have a rock climbing wall. It's a dynamic place. We are, we have one central dining hall on campus, which is amazing. And we have other eateries as well. We've been ranked very highly for our food. And I just wanna mention as we wrap up real quick, we have the Taylor Center for Equity and Inclusion. So as I talked about how diversity, equity, and, and inclusion is very important to our campus community. We have so many events and so many activities for our students to really feel empowered, engaged, and connected for success, along with our mentoring programs for students. But I really wanna highlight, you know, this is just a snapshot of St. Olaf College. Right on, we're on a hill, our campus is beautiful. This is literally what it looks like right behind me. It literally looks like a castle, but I, really, I highly recommend that you reach out to us to learn more about our college as we are open for tours and information sessions and interviews. So if you please, Feel free to reach out to us directly. We'd love to learn more about you. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right, our next presenter is Emmanuel College. Good evening, everyone. Um, let me just share my screen here. Classic Zoom talk. Okay, awesome. And, Go. Okay, awesome. Um, so uh, good evening, everyone. My name is Sean Lee, one of the assistant directors of admissions at Emmanuel College. Um, so just some quick facts about Emmanuel itself. Emmanuel was founded in 1919 by the Sisters of Notre Dame de Namur. Uh, we're located in Boston, Massachusetts, as you can, as you can kind of see um, in this picture here. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's a, we're a private uh, Catholic liberal arts college. Um, and we've changed a lot in the last 100 years, but uh, we've always maintained our mission to educate students in a dynamic learning community uh, rooted in liberal arts and sciences and shaped by strong ethical values, a commitment to social justice and service, uh, the Catholic intellectual tradition, and the global mission of the Sisters of Notre Dame de Namur. I'm still working on my French and Duolingo, so please pardon my pronunciation of that. But um, as we've entered our second century, um, we're excited to see the growth of the college and hope that uh, you will really join us in creating new traditions while celebrating our old ones. Awesome. So um, kind of getting into a little bit more about our location. So we're, uh, we have the extreme fortune of being right in the heart of the city of Boston. We're right in the Fenway neighborhood. So we're about a 10 minute walk uh, from Fenway Park, which you can see right here, uh, as well as a 10 minute walk from the Museum of Fine Art. Um, so it's a really interesting and unique place uh, within the city. But if you can see right here in the bottom right hand corner, um, this is actually our campus space. So what's really nice is that uh, we're right um, there. Um, we're not spread out over the course of a couple neighborhoods like some city schools might be. Um, we're all right in that one space. And what's really nice about that too is that if you were standing right there on the quad, uh, you really wouldn't be able to tell that you're in Boston. So it's a nice balance between having campus life uh, as well as um, city life as well. Um, I like to think of it as small school appeal with big city feel. Um, one of those really fun things that our marketing team uh, came up with. So yeah, it's a great location in our city. Our students definitely uh, make the most of, uh, of being in Boston. Um, they love having the campus space to return to, kind of like their home base. Uh, well, still getting to explore the city, do all these different kinds of internships, um, and really get a good feel for what it's like to live um, city life. So kind of going into a little bit about Emmanuel at a glance, um, we have over 1,800 undergraduate students 
um, as well as 16 NCAA Division III athletic teams, uh, 70 plus majors, minors, and areas of study among five different academic schools, those schools being uh, the School of Business and Management, the School of Sciences, and the School of Science and Health. I'm getting a notification on my computer saying my internet connection is unstable, so I do apologize if I'm kind of cutting in and out, so I'll try uh, my best to alleviate that. Um, but yeah, um, as far as like some of the things our students do, we do have over, uh, on average, 50,000 hours of community service that our students uh, give to the city of Boston, as well as um, all over the country, uh, as well as having 14 different Fulbright recipients since 2011, and also offering a four-year residential experience on our campus. Um, kind of going a little bit more into our academics, like I mentioned, we have over 70 plus majors, minors, and areas of study. Um, our most popular majors are psychology, biology, education, and business. We do have a number of really unique programs, uh, such as uh, writing, editing, and publishing, as well as art therapy. Um, so there's some unique programs that uh, we have here on our campus. Um, but what's really nice about um, the liberal arts college feel is that uh, you can really build up your curriculum by studying across the disciplines. For So uh, for example, uh, students who might be interested in studying business, um, it's really great uh, to also take some sociology or psychology courses to understand consumer behavior. Uh, likewise, for um, health science students, it's really great to study um, a little bit of graphic design and art so you can get a good idea of how uh, different muscular structures work uh, by drawing them out. So it's a really unique opportunity to kind of go across the various different schools. Um, and what's really nice too is that we also offer what's called an individualized major. What that means basically is if there is a program uh, that you are interested in, but you don't see it on our list, uh, you can actually start it up um, by uh, getting together a bunch of different classes that we offer. Uh, as long as that gets approved by the dean, you're absolutely good to go. Um, one, of the, uh, one of the most popular individualized majors that we have uh, multiple students enroll in every single year uh, is environmental science. So that's something that we don't technically offer, but it's something that can be built out with the individualized major. Um, one unique opportunity that we here have here at Emanuel is uh, the fact that we're part of a consortium called the Colleges of the Fenway. So with the uh, Colleges of the Fenway, it's a five school consortium that includes us, uh, Simmons University, the Mass College of Pharmacy and Health Sciences, the Mass College of Art and Design, as well as the Wentworth Institute of Technology. So uh, we do a lot of really cool interscholastic um, events between the five schools, whether that's um, intramural sports or um, performing arts. But what it's most well known for is the opportunity to cross register courses. So uh, what that means basically is if you are a health science student who is interested in some classes that Mass College of Pharmacy and Health Sciences offer, uh, you can actually take that over there. Similarly with a graphic design student uh, who might want to take some courses over at Mass College of Art and Design, um, that's something you can do as well, barring any prerequisite courses. But it really helps us feel like our school of around 1800 students is really a big part of a university of around 10,000. So it's a really awesome opportunity and they're all within a five minute walk of each other. You always see Simmons students walking across our campus because their residential campus and their uh, academic campus are on either side of us uh, and always at our Dunkin Donuts. No big deal or anything, but that's fine. Um, but yeah, it's definitely a really cool opportunity. Um, one thing I definitely want to highlight is something that we call the Emmanuel effect. Again, our marketing team loves these alliterations, loves these rhymes, all that kind of stuff. Um, but it really is talking about um, your experience here as well as outcomes. Because again, college is an investment. We want to make sure that you get that return on your investment. So um, we do have a 100% internship rate. And that's because um, an internship is actually part of every student's curriculum. So 100% um, of our students complete a one or more career launching internships. Our career development office does a really great job in terms of getting to know a student on a very personal basis. And then also helping them um, figure out what their next steps are going to be. Um, some of the best learning that you can really do is done outside of the classroom. And um, some of the best things that you can really understand is if that job is right for you and you really won't be able to know that um, unless you get into that classroom, get into, um, if you're an education major, uh, for <laughs> get into the hospital, get into uh, the courtroom and uh, really get a good experience for what that is like. Um, so for some postgraduate information, um, we do have a 95% employment rate as well as a 94% graduate school placement rate for the class of 2020. So um, again, a real testament to our students as well as our career development office in terms of helping students figure out uh, what their short term and their long term goals are going to be and where they want to end up after graduation. You can also see on the right hand side, uh, a list of graduate schools that our students have gone on to attend as well as some employers um, that our students have gone on to work for. Thank you so much, Sean, for oh, sharing shoot. that great information. You can um, share. Right, 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 right. 
<laughs> That's okay. You can share any links that you want to continue, um, you want the attendees to pay attention to in the chat. And then for our attendees, of course, use the Q&A session, section to ask questions to any of our presenters this evening. We do have one last presenter and then all of our presenters will come back to the screen and answer a few questions that have been pre-written for them, okay? All right, so our last presenter is Vassar College. Thank you so much. Happy to be the final presenter for the evening. Uh, I'm going to uh, go ahead and share slides as well, um, and we'll hopefully move through them kind of quickly. Uh, my name is David Toomer. I'm Director of Admission at Vassar College. Uh, Vassar is located in the Hudson Valley region of New York, so we're about 90 minutes north of New York City. Um, if you want to travel between New York City and Poughkeepsie, New York, you can take the Metro North. It's about 90 minutes uh, train ride um, right into Grand Central. Um, in, in, in New York and you know, all, the, all the things that you can do down there. People seldom go down there. There's plenty to do uh, up, where, up where we are. Let's see if these slides will advance. Uh, this gives you a sense of, of where the, the college is located. And a lot, of, uh, a lot of life in the Hudson Valley really is um, centered around the fact that the river's here and it's beautiful outdoors. There's lots of, lots of things to do uh, in, in, in the region. Relatively small college. We've got uh, right around 2,500. Um, undergraduate students, um, about, th about a third of our students are students of color, um, fairly high or fairly uh, healthy percentage of uh, first generation college students, and usually right around 20% of our students are um, Pell or Pell eligible. Um, there's, I'm not going to, we only have six minutes, so I won't go through every slide that we have here. Um, one of the big takeaways for Vassar is the open curriculum, and there are very, very few, um, I guess, uh, requirements. Um, the only requirements really have, that we have are, as you can see on the slide here, uh, the first year writing seminar. That's a one semester course. Um, there, um, you'll need to do um, at least one quantitative course, which does not have to be um, a, a calculus or a mathematics course. There's lots of other areas where you can show your uh, quantitative um, skills and ability, and then language proficiency. Um, many people come to us bilingual and they don't have to necessarily do that. They can test out of it. Um, we've recently started taking American Sign Language um, as, a, as a show of language proficiency. So lots of ways to, to, to manage that. Um, 51 majors, 67 correlates, which um, are essentially the same as majors, and two dual degree programs, one in public health, uh, which is through um, Columbia University, and then in engineering um, through, through Dartmouth College. A um, little bit more about the open curriculum. Uh, it's not the situation where you're trying to figure out what, you know, what am I going to do? You'll have a pre-major advisor when you first arrive. Um, by the end of sophomore year, um, you will have selected a major and then you'll have a major advisor. Um, and then you'll have other types of advisors. Um, you'll, you'll work with someone in career services. Um, you'll have your house dean. So there's lots of, lots of people, lots of uh, people around that, that'll help you to, to figure out what to do uh, with, with your coursework. So you graduate, uh, graduate on time and move into a career or graduate school or whatever that next step might be. Um, experiential learning is huge. Um, at Vassar, most students do um, some sort of um, internship or um, oftentimes that will be um, field work, uh, which might be um, you know, a little more related to research within, within the major. Um, the, the, that the students involved with. Um, but we have the Undergraduate Research uh, Institute, which um, you have URSI, which is uh, represented on the slide right now, um, the Ford Scholars. We have lots of opportunities for independent research um, and a lot of faculty-led um, research. Uh, that's where strictly undergraduate. We're all about the undergraduate experience. And so to the extent that faculty um, need and want um, uh, research assistants, they're going to undergraduates to, to, to get those people. So it's actually fairly easy to get fairly significant uh, graduate, or excuse me, uh, uh, research uh, positions with, with faculty members um, at, at the college. Um, 130 plus study abroad programs that so people will study um, all over the place. Uh, we have some um, uh, study away programs, um, such as a program with Spelman College, if you want to spend a semester um, studying at HBCU. Um, almost all of our students live on campus. Um, we've got residential houses, we've got uh, cooperative house, we've got residence or apartment style residences. 
Um, most people, uh, students typically live in the same house for three or four years. Um, so you'll, uh, you'll get your house, uh, you'll select your house at, um, as, a, as a first year. Um, and then typically students return to that, they'll live in a different room within the same house. Um, and then by a senior year, about half the students will remain in that college house or they might move to one of the apartments or uh, co-op uh, or, or townhouse type, type buildings. Um, lots of um, student clubs and organizations, lots of great um, resource centers on, on campus uh, to help you stay involved. Um, Vassar's Division Three in, in sports were part of the Liberty League. Um, so um, if you want to extend out that athletic career uh, a little bit longer, you might be able to do that here. Um, most, almost everyone has a job or is set to go to graduate or professional school uh, upon, uh, upon graduation from, from Vassar. Um, our acceptance rates at uh, law schools and medical schools is quite high. Um, the medical school, uh, just a, a quick caveat about that, there are some colleges and universities that won't give a letter of support um, to medical school, school applicants until they review their MedCat scores and some other uh, in, information. So they kind of, they can sort of artificially support uh, what that, that, that really high um, uh, admission rate to medical school looks like. Uh, we don't do that at Vassar. Anyone who wants to apply to medical school is going to get a very thoughtful letter um, of, su of support from, from the college. And a lot of the people who apply each year actually are recent alumni. So they might take a little bit of time off to do something and then, and then apply to med school, but they can still come back to uh, our career services and they will help them uh, with, with that search. Um, you know, the application stuff is fairly, I think, fairly straightforward. Common app, coalition app, Westbridge app. Um, our, our deadlines are fairly typical. Our ED1 deadline's a little bit later than most at November 15, which can take a little bit of that pressure off um, in, in, in the fall. And we do have transfer um, students uh, both in the spring and the fall. Those are very, very small uh, classes. Um, and you can see there's, uh, we, we take, we're looking for the things that most people are taking if they're a holistic school. So um, your, your transcript, your curriculum, and, and, and so on. Uh, let's see. Wonderful. All right. Thank you so much, Mr. No David, for, <laughs> for sharing that great information. You know, it is such a hard job. I know you all have to share so much information in six minutes. Um, but I do hope that our attendees know that you can follow up with all of our admission counselors using that contact information that's included in the chat, as well as if you have any specific questions, continue to use the Q&A. And then I do hope that you do go out and visit some of these colleges or explore their websites for more information. All right, we are now at the favorite part of um, this session for me, which is where our college representatives get to give you advice about how to continue in this um, search process. So we're going to have all of our college reps come back to the screen. And we're actually probably just going to have enough time for one question. We'll see how it goes. And for our very first question, it is what advice do you want to give the students? They've heard all of this great information tonight. What advice do you want to give them about navigating the college search process? My advice is really simple. As you've heard from all of my colleagues, there are a lot of things about colleges that can be really similar. And if you're visiting a lot of colleges, those lines get blurred really easily. So at the end of your visit, if you are physically on campus, sit in the car, write some notes down, take some, look at the pictures on your phone and identify a couple of things that you really liked or maybe you didn't really like about that school. So you've got that clear kind of conclusion picture in your mind before you go to the next school. My advice would be to really keep an open mind in the process. Um, I think a lot of times students come in with a really specific idea of maybe the type of school that they want or environment that they want. And sometimes you visit a place and find out that what you thought you wanted is not what you wanted. And that's okay. It's okay to, you know, have a, a range of places that you're considering. Um, and do keep you know a list with multiple options because you never know how things are going to come together and you might end up somewhere that you weren't expecting, um, but it can be really great. And I say that from personal experience because that's what happened to me. So, you know, just keep an open mind. Ashley stole my answer. So off the top of my head, um, I would say be yourself. Don't do anything because you think it's going to look good to a college. Do it because you love it. You're passionate about it. 
one time had a student ask me, should I join Model UN because it looks like it's an academic club? I was like, do you want to do that? And he's like, no, I'm into science and I'm into this. And I was like, then don't do that. Um, do things you enjoy doing, take classes you enjoy doing, do them to the best of your ability, but do them because you want to be doing them and the right colleges will recognize that. I would say you definitely would want to ask questions. This is your time. The college search process is an exciting time. My colleagues would agree, but we, wouldn't, we wouldn't want you to visit our campus without asking questions, ask questions. Um, sometimes I meet with students and they say, well, I was too shy to ask this question. No, please ask questions. This is your time. And uh, we are here to support you through this journey. I'll try not to go over this time, but um, I think my advice for all of you is just keep in touch with your admissions counselor. Um, we're always here to support you and answer any questions you guys might have. Um, even if it's the news that you're going somewhere else, that's totally fine. That's something that we definitely want to keep note of too. And for anyone who's seen uh, Spider-Man Far From Home, a lot of things could have been fixed if you just reached out to the admissions counselor. So definitely do that. So I think my uh, advice might echo um, things that others have already said, but um, I'll say it maybe in a different way. Don't follow the herd. Um, a lot of times uh, people get sort of caught up in, I must go to this school because all these people went there and that's what they majored in and so on and so forth. And there, um, you know, there, there, there are hundreds and hundreds of hundreds of great choices. Um, so, um, you know, be uh, certainly apply to the places that everyone else applies. So that's absolutely fine. But you know, strike out on your own a bit as well. And you might um, you might find that you even stand out more in that college's admission process at the rest of your school instead of applying there as well. Wonderful. Thank you all so much for sharing information about your schools this evening, as well as advice for our attendees. Um, I do hope that our attendees had a chance to grab that information out of the chat section. We are at the end of this session. Want to thank everyone for joining us. As you close out of the session, you will receive a five question quick survey. We appreciate any of the feedback you're able to share with us. Want to encourage you to check out the recordings that will be available at strivescan.com slash aims. And there will be more sessions available on March 30th. So make sure you register for those college fairs as well. Thank you all so much for being here. Thank you to our college representatives. Everyone have a good evening. Thank you.